The objective of this video is to go over the wall chart that shows many of the structures associated with the digestive system, um, both in terms of the digestive system anatomy as well as the blood vessels that are um, found around some of those structures as well. And starting at the top of the chart, and we'll work our way down toward the bottom, and there are quite a few views that are squeezed together on this chart. Um, in the upper left, it shows the liver, sort of a see-through version of the liver where we can see the blood supply um, in and around and among the tissues of the liver. We see the gallbladder, which is this green expanded bulb shaped structure. We see a little bit of the duodenum and the pancreas. And we can see a lot of uh, structures of those digestive accessory organs and the blood vessels that are in the area. So the liver occupies most of the upper right quadrant of the abdomen. This large single blue tube is the inferior vena cava running behind it. The vein that is at the top part of the liver on either side is called the hepatic vein and connects directly into the inferior vena cava and on this particular model is shown in blue. The falciform ligament is this flap of mesentery on the anterior of the liver. Um, with the number five on it. The hepatic portal vein is the blue tube, or purple rather, um, blood vessel that's running into the bottom of the liver and coming from all of the digestive organs and other areas. Um, the splenic vein is shown running kind of along the superior surface of the pancreas. This is going to be the superior and in uh, superior mesenteric artery in red and vein in purple that is running into the hepatic portal vein behind the pancreas. We can also see the um, right. Remember, the liver is mostly on the right side of the abdomen, so that helps me orient that this is the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct. And where those two arms of the Y come together, this is the common hepatic duct. The green tube running directly to and from the gallbladder is called the cystic duct. And then where the cystic duct comes together with the common hepatic duct, the rest of this green tube is called the common bile duct. And it's going to run alongside the hepatic portal vein. They're kind of gathered together um, with connective tissue wrapping. Um, so the common bile duct comes down and then goes behind the pancreas. So we can sort of see it at the back there. Merges with the main pancreatic duct that runs through the length of the pancreas in white. And those two have a shared connection to the duodenum called the hepatopancreatic sphincter or sphincter of Odi. Then the accessory pancreatic duct is this last branch off of the main pancreatic duct that has its own separate connection to the duodenum. Inside the duodenum, we can see the plicae circularis, or circular folds that make increased surface area inside the small intestine. And I think that I've covered then most of what I can see in this view that we learn in this class. Um, on this side, these views of um, the gastrointestinal tract show more of the microscopic anatomy that we focus on in lecture. This gives a nice view of kind of what a mesentery is, um, where there are two layers of visceral peritoneum that would wrap around the organ that are sandwiched together, housing blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and nerves, but no digestive organ inside. Um, and also the plique circularis or circular folds. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, this also shows a villus uh, circular folds and then the villi that cover the circular folds and then what you can't see are the microvilli that extend from the plasma membrane of each cell. This view over here shows us the wall of the stomach. So again, this view and these views um, would be more lecture content based. 
And then in the middle here, we've got a pretty nice view of some of the glands and vessels um, that are associated with the head and neck. So I can see the parotid salivary gland that is um, para-oto alongside the ear. Here is the submandibular gland, and here is the sublingual gland. Okay, the thyroid gland sitting on the front of the trachea down in the neck below the larynx is shown. Here's the aortic arch, right? Um, this is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk, and then the right subclavian artery, the right common carotid artery, then the second exit off the aortic arch is the left common carotid artery, and then the third exit is the left subclavian artery. This shows the very end of the internal and external jugular veins that would run up the neck on either side, and the brachiocephalic veins. Um, most of that is omitted in order to focus on the other things that are shown in this view. And we can pick up with digestive structures with the esophagus running down here, and it's got um, kind of a cutaway to show you a little bit of the inside of it. But the esophagus runs behind the trachea and extends down through the diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm. We don't see the heart in this view because it would cover up the esophagus. Um, but you can see where the esophagus um, runs through the diaphragm and then connects with the stomach fairly close below that. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more out of that upper view and show this view. So um, where the esophagus connects with the stomach, the region is the cardia. The constriction in that area is the cardiac sphincter. The fundus of the stomach is where it is it is opposite the exit, even though the stomach makes kind of a J shape. The fundus is up against the diaphragm. And then the body of the stomach is the main region. And that last region of the stomach where it kind of turns that J shape um, curve is the pylorus. And the constriction between the stomach and the duodenum of the small intestine is called the pyloric sphincter. Okay. This over here is the spleen, and I can't really see the pancreas in this view because it sits more or less behind the stomach and kind of nestled into the duodenum right in this area, but it's not in view at all. I can also see the liver, which has been kind of pinned up, so we're looking more at the bottom of the liver. The falciform ligament is that flap of mesentery at the anterior of the liver. The gallbladder is this expanded green bulb-shaped structure that sits on the inferior surface of the liver. I can see the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct. This is the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct and then the common bile duct going to the duodenum. This is going to be the hepatic portal vein connecting into the bottom of the liver and shown here in purple again. The common hepatic artery running alongside of it. Here's the celiac trunk emerging from the abdominal aorta in red. Then the left gastric artery is shown going vertical and kind of running along the, the wall of the stomach there. The left gastric vein is shown in purple alongside it. This is the splenic vein, which emerges from behind the stomach, and the splenic artery, which is running alongside of it, going over to the spleen. Here is the inferior mesenteric vein that comes in without an artery next to it and merges with the splenic vein to connect into the hepatic portal vein. Okay. And this is likely the superior mesenteric artery and vein um, in front of the abdominal aorta a little bit, but we had a better view of them in a different part of the chart. Okay. The lesser omentum has been removed from view, which allows us to see these biliary ducts and blood vessels that are in this area. I can sort of see some remnants of it where it was imagined to be cut away here. But the greater omentum 
is connected to the greater curvature of the stomach. This is one of the mesenteries, and mesenteries in humans store adipose tissue, so it kind of looks like a curtain of fat. Um, but this is the greater omentum, and then a lot of it has been removed in order to allow us to see the intestines below. But it is connected to the greater curvature of the stomach, and it's also, it also drapes down and then turns back on itself and runs back up to and connects to the transverse colon, which is also mostly removed in the middle here. I can see the ridges of the plique circularis or circular folds in the duodenum here. Then the jejunum is going to be the middle region of the small intestine. I can see mesentery proper here, which again stores adipose tissue, so it looks like fat. And then I can find the very last part of the small intestine, the ileum, coming into and connecting here with the large intestine. And I can see this constriction is the ileocecal sphincter. The portion below is the cecum with the vermiform appendix attached to the base of it. Then the ascending colon, I can see just a little tiny bit of it, and then it disappears a little bit. The transverse colon is these two openings, but really the part that connects them across the center. The descending colon would be over on this side. It's, it's mostly not in view. Maybe this is the end of it here, where I can see the tenne E. coli, that ribbon of the colon. And these pouches, one is a hostrum, plural is hostra. So coming back over to the very bottom of the descending colon, it kind of turns and does this little squiggly motion. Um, so it gives it the name sigmoid colon for looking like the Greek letter sigma, which is the symbol for some um, S-U-M in addition. Here's the tenne E. coli again and a hostrum. And then the sigmoid colon kind of does that squiggly thing to move toward the midline of the body and also move toward the posterior in order to line up with the rectum. And so the rectum is running straight up and down. That gives it its name. So then if I scroll down to the very bottom, and again, these views are focused more on blood vessels, um, much of which I've either already covered or it's covering some of the vessels that are further away from the midline that aren't shown in this view and um, we don't learn all those vessels. But here is the ileum and the ileocecal valve or ileocecal sphincter where it connects to the large intestine between the cecum below, and here's the vermiform appendix, and the ascending colon alongside of it. So here's tenne E. coli and a hostrum, okay, part of that connection. And then over on this side, this shows the rectum with the internal anal sphincter, the smooth muscle in the wall of the GI tract where it meets the anus, and the external anal sphincter being skeletal muscle that is more lateral on the outside of the anus. So the internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter are both in view along with the rectum here.